Hello. Hello. Welcome to jasonnewland.com. This is daily hypnotic buffet. And uh, 2018. So this is the sixth one so far. And hi, James. So a few people are watching already. I sometimes do them live. I sometimes do them pre-recorded. So I record them, then upload them. The benefit of doing it live is it's instantly available for people to watch. Last night, I'm drinking coffee. Last night, do you like my mug? Yay! Andre bought me that. So um, last night I did one, or yesterday, and it took about three hours to upload. And I spent all night pretty much processing it, uploading it, converting it to an MP3, putting it up onto iTunes. So it took a long time. Angela Larson, Angela, Angela, Angela is watching. Hello Angela, are you there? Say hi if you're there or if you're not watching. Give me a wave. I'll tell you something about Angela. Angela, I keep gonna keep saying the word Angela. Angela's been following me for years and years and years and years. She even took me on holiday with her on a cruise so uh, yeah there's a few people that have been with me on this journey since I started back in what 2006 so it's quite uh, it's quite nice to see people pop up now and then uh, so this basically is a hypnotic buffet. It is it's kind of a, a little mixture of different things. It's me talking about what's going on for me, talking about my life, talking about ideas that I might have. Um, I've just been eating a biscuit, and I'm really a little bit conscious that there might be some biscuits, uh, crumbs hanging off of my chin and my lips, but hopefully not. So this is a part of the day to relax. James said he's been watching since 2008. Thank you, James. So that's 10 years. Wow. Surely you must be bored of me by now. Wow, 10 years. That's a long time. I'm even bored of me by now. I've been doing it. I've been on here for 12 years. Although technically... I've got a little book here. This isn't the original book, but this is the very, very first book, hypnosis book I ever read. Quite a good start, really, isn't it? Hypnosis for beginners. See that? I bought this in two thousand, no, nineteen ninety-eight. Uh, this is actually the 15th edition here, 2014, but it was originally written and published in 1986. Wow. So I must have bought the 1997 version edition, which would be the third edition. Now it's on the 15th edition. In fact, it might be on a even more since then. But yeah, so I've uh, just thought I'd point that out. This is the very first hypnosis book I ever read. And it was a weird one because in 2008, no, 1998 rather, not 2008, 1998, I lived in London and I was going through a, I don't know if it was an existential period, but definitely an inner looking period, looking at my life and kind of trying to figure out what was going on in my head and in my life and 
family and the past and all that stuff. Because in 1997, I was kind of forced to look at my past. So I had I kind of, it was, you know, I, was, I won't go into details, but I was forced to kind of re group a bit and to actually maybe accept that some things happened that I had pushed to the back of my head, to the back of my brain and didn't really want to accept, I guess. I don't necessarily want to accept it now, but. So in 2008, I bought two hypnosis books. This one, and there's another one I've got behind me somewhere, but it's hidden. I couldn't find it. Uh, so I got that those two books I didn't look at them straight away I bought them and I stuck them on the shelf and probably left them there for a few weeks and then I started delving because for me hypnosis was like magic like witchcraft in my mind it was um, it was something that only I don't know, it felt a bit uh, supernatural to me. Until I started reading the books, realising that it's not supernatural at all. And what you see on television with uh, a hypnotist on television, stage hypnotist, is very different from the kind of thing that would happen in a therapy room. Uh, which is also very different from what I do when I do a video or make a, an mp3 audio and I've kind of moved away from that as well so I'm not doing what you, uh, perhaps I used to do I'm trying to incorporate everything into one which may maybe isn't suitable for everybody but then nothing that anyone does is going to be suitable for everybody. Um, even if you gave somebody, if you gave everybody that was thirsty water, guaranteed that someone's going to say, I don't like water, I only got anything else. Don't like the taste of it. Uh, so, you know, you can't please everybody. So I've got Linda watching as well. Hi, Linda. Susan. Hi, Susan. So there's a few people come in. Some people come and go. Um, you can watch this at the end uh, when it's uploaded. It will be available on YouTube, Vimeo, uh, on my website. And also it will be available to download as an MP3 and to stream the audio on iTunes and SoundCloud. So that will be there. And I'll be posting them on Twitter and Google Plus and everything like that. Only watch or listen when you can safely close your eyes. La 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 la. Because I might bore you. So, another book I thought I'd show you is this. It's called Tom, it's called Wilt. It's written by Tom Sharp. This was one of the, this made me laugh. I think this was the first book as a child that made me laugh hysterically. Really, really made me laugh. Because it was, it had kind of adult content, not, um, wasn't really aimed at children, I don't think. But it was just some really funny bits and I just, just laughed all the way through it. I read it recently, uh, reread it and it was funny, but you know, it didn't quite, you know, my, you know, it's, I was a kid then, so I guess I found different things funny and things have changed, but uh, another writer that I used to, I found really hilarious. There was one summer I was waiting at an airport for a plane to go to Spain, and I went to Spain for the afternoon, and then came back. I was gonna live there, but then changed my mind. And I had to wait about 15 hours for the train, for the plane. So I bought a bunch of books. So I was reading the uh, Woody Allen books. I think one was like Radio Days, another one was, I can't remember what it was, something Feathers or something. But 
I could, just couldn't stop laughing. It was so hilarious. Woody Allen's books. I know his films are funny and he was a pretty, very funny comedian. His books just really hilarious as well. Not sure what the one of them is my dad, but anyway, we're not here to talk about Woody Allen's parenting skills <laughs> or parenting decisions. So, not much has really happened today for me. I was up all night putting the stuff into the, you know, organizing everything uploading the video it took hours to upload to vimeo then i had to download it upload it to youtube then convert it and it took a long time i'm pleased now that the website jasonnewland.com that is now there's a section there in the menu hypnotic buffet 2018 so you can go there and every single video is, is on there as well as the audio to download so that's cool. So that, I did that as well. So that took up quite a lot of time. I am finding my eyes lids getting quite tired. So I was, what I was thinking about earlier has changed a bit. There's a couple of things happened today, which um, I don't really want to go into because it's about other people's lives and it's their personal business. But I just sort of noticed that How I feel, you know, because when I woke up this morning, well, I went to bed about six, seven in the morning, and, or f maybe five or so, I don't know what time it was, but I didn't get out of bed till five in the afternoon, and it was starting to get dark already. And I felt like I would, I had wasted my day, and I really haven't accomplished much during this day today it's gone and i wonder if i can tap that while it's on oh, okay sorry I, and i had there's things i want to do i want to work on my website maybe i want to do some studying i've just started doing a mental health course online um and it's a uh, it's from the University of Liverpool and it's on a website called Future Learn. So you can do the course, it's free to do. If you want the, the certificate of completion, then you need to pay like 60 pounds, which is, I don't know how much that is in your currency, but about 60 pounds sterling. So, but it's proper, proper courses at proper universities, really in depth. So I started doing that and kind of part of what I'm trying to do is to feed, feed stuff into my mind, feed stuff into my brain, you know, uh, knowledge, information, so I can maybe make some connections and use that in these sessions, maybe. So someone's just said hello or clicked hello like hello though whoever liked me liked this thing Andre is asleep at the moment but he might pop in if he pops in I'll pick him up and show everyone him but I'm not sure if he will I took him out to the garage about an hour and a half ago and he was so naughty I had this bag, this side bag to put him in, to keep him, um, you know, once I go into the garage, I have to keep him in the bag. He wouldn't stay in the bag. He kept wiggling out. And then I couldn't get into the garage because it was closed. Because I would just missed, missed, I missed it by one minute, which was annoying. And then I came back and there was no lights in the street, but there was cars going past. So I was trying to keep Andre in the bag so that he didn't get out of his out of his um, noose thing you know the the lead that I've got for him because sometimes he gets out of it if he gets out of it and I can't see him because I couldn't see anything because it was pitch black um, 
he could walk in the road and that would be it. So I was trying to keep him in the bag. So I'm walking along, before I know it, he's on the floor. He's, he's just jumped out of the bag. It's just, oh, such a wind up. It is, looking after kids is, is difficult sometimes, isn't it? And he is a kid. So I've been thinking about the future. Been wondering about the future. Thinking about I could do something with this. Uh, John Kelly's here. Hi, John Kelly. Hello. I could do something with um, these videos, these audios, and get the best bits. If there is a best bit, then might and you know turn it into some kind of a book. It might only be like half a page or something, but you know I'm sure over a year I could find something. And I do wish to write something on kindness because something I've been thinking about, it's a subject that I am interested in and also challenges me as well because I'm not kind all the time. I'm not, I don't feel kindness towards people constantly all day long. And so I could really do with having more kindness but not just towards other people, but towards myself. And that's one of the things that I'm probably more interested in is focusing on the kindness towards ourselves. Because there's a thing called the Metta Bhavna in Buddhism. It's a, it's a meditation. So the, the Buddhist organization that I'm involved in, that I kind of go to meditate with they have two main meditations there's the mindfulness of breathing and the metta bhavana the mindfulness of breathing <coughs> excuse me is well you basically you're mindful on your breathing you count the breaths you count the breathing in count the breathing out and then eventually you just notice the breathing you don't count it anymore but it's about focusing on the breath the but not just that, you're also being mindful of how you feel, being mindful of surrounding sounds. It's not just about, it's not about ignoring stuff. So if there's traffic going on outside, if there was a band playing in a pub next door, it's not about trying to block that out. It can be about, it can be as simple as sitting there noticing the anger <laughs> or the frustration or the resentment or even the jealousy maybe, wishing that you were there instead of sitting in a, on the floor. Perhaps you'd rather be in the pub drinking, having fun. So it's a, it's a mindfulness of breathing, but it's not just about the breath. It's a mindfulness exercise. The Metta Bhavna is about focusing on emotions raising uh, positive feelings towards not just yourself but also to other people but the part which is right is there's only a small part which aims at yourself the rest is outward and although the I I've I've been doing it since 2002 that meditation, I struggle with it. Mindfulness of breathing, mind, mindfulness stuff, I'm very with. Um, I used to do, basically, used to do mind, mindful meditative walking when I was a small child, walking home. I used to love just walking there and just focusing on how I felt and noticing the, the ground underneath my feet and being aware of the sound of the, maybe the, let's say the, fact, the sound of the flowers the sounds of the flowers flapping, no, the sounds of the, the, well, whoever, the bees or the birds, the sound of the wind, the trees blowing, you know, things like that. The feeling of the, of the wind on my face, um, the 
the feeling of my breath, especially when it's cold, feeling breathing in the cold air. It's, uh, yeah, so I used to quite like that. I didn't know what it was at the time, but I used to do that. And I think maybe we all do that to a degree. Perhaps there's things that we all do. I can think of a couple of things where you're very focused on how you're feeling, which is mindfulness, where you're focused on the physical sensations, but not just the physical, but also how you're feeling about the physical sensations and but also being aware of outside as well, not just inward. So it's, it's like a, it's a, a balancing act, I guess. It's not, not just, instead of just focusing on a television set or focusing on something that we're watching, maybe you're watching a football match or something or watching something else outside, you're you're balancing it, so you're, you are watching it, but at the same time, you're aware of how you feel. It's much easier to be aware of how you feel when you're uncomfortable, which is part of the reason why I think Buddhists, especially in the old days, got, you know, got themselves sitting on a, a floor, because it's not comfortable, really. So when you're not comfortable, there's less likely you're going to doze off, there's less likely that you're going to drift off. You're going to be aware of the physicality and you're not going to be distracted 100% by what's going on outside. Perhaps. So yeah. So I've been thinking maybe do something involved with kindness. Focusing on ways of exploring that maybe. Also, I need to get some glasses. I think my eyebrows have outgrown my glasses. See, they shouldn't, they shouldn't be above the glasses, really, should they? It should be kind of the same level. Look. I often wondered if I actually lost my eyebrows, what would I do? Would I just leave them as they are, you know? Or would I paint some on? If I painted them on, would I have really high ones, you know, like, <laughs> or would I just have them as they are? Because my eyebrows are quite low. They're very much uh, on the eye socket. Um, not low as in, they're not in my eyes, my eyebrows. They're above my eyes, which is good. But anyway, that's probably not what I was going to talk about today. So, the idea of kindness and for me doing this is perhaps an act of kindness to myself because it gives me an opportunity to, um, imagine if your eyebrows were like on your chin, that'd be weird wouldn't it? But yeah, to give yourself an opportunity to, give myself an opportunity to express something. And to maybe, because you know with hypnosis, it's about focus, right? Sorry, I'm, I'm moving the, ca ca um, the camera around. It's not about, it doesn't have to be about me saying now, you will focus on my voice and you will notice your feet and you blah, 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 blah. it's not about it can be about that it doesn't have to be about that every communication that we have with another person we influence each other continuously that's why I think it's very important that all of us maybe be a little bit careful about who we associate with or who we spend time with because that person will influence you and you will influence them as well. So it could, it could even itself out, you know. It's, uh, I like to think that I'm in my interactions with people, hopefully a little bit, I try to hopefully think that I am influencing in a positive way in some cases, 
but maybe not all the time. And I do wonder about that because sometimes I don't want to be thinking about other people's feelings. Sometimes I'm just wanting to just talk a bunch of rubbish for no reason, which you could say maybe that's what I'm doing now. But afterwards, I wonder, I think, how can I, from one angle, say, be careful, we need to, all of us need to perhaps watch what we say? Because it does affect other people. It affects ourselves as well. But at the same time, then I go off and say a bunch of rubbish that perhaps was hurtful to somebody without meaning to. So, if good stuff can influence people, then negative words, phrases, ideas can also have an influence. And to be on guard from that, the only way you can really, really be on guard is by learning about it, by realising that what other people say affects us. What we say to ourselves affects us, what other people say to us affects us. And this whole thing about sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, is, of course, as we all know, very, very silly. It's a silly thing to say. It's what we tell children in order to, it's, uh, to try and help them to deal with maybe a bully or someone that's being cruel to them. But... It's never worked, I don't think. The fact is, words do affect us. I think history has proven that. Um, yeah, words can start a war. It's amazing, really. That's what worries me with the internet, because some political leaders are very vocal, perhaps a bit too freely vocal and to say whatever they want to say. And that could lead to a lot of problems for millions of people. It's a shame, really. So, how do you guard yourself? Also, I was thinking, you know, you got the whole, um, people say, oh, sticks and stones may break my mind, but words will never hurt me. You know, stuff like that. So many of those sayings and phrases, no smoke without fire. <laughs> like, yeah, what about a smoke machine? Um, it's no smoke without fire. It's... The thing is, with a with saying like that, it's, it feels so logical to me. I know it's it's ridiculous. Uh, and there's no there's no fire without smoke would probably be the, the best sentence. But maybe there is fire without smoke, I don't know. I mean if you've got fire and you've got a smoke extractor, maybe you know, I've I've sat in living rooms and inside fires would there been no smoke at all. Admittedly, they were electric fires, some of them, but regardless of that. So, these sayings are there to help people. We've, we've, we've made them up and we've passed them on through generation for maybe hundreds, maybe thousands of years. It's to help each other. It was never, I don't think it was ever caused to cause harm. But I don't think a lot of it does help. necessarily maybe it does maybe it doesn't just an idea so what can you do to protect yourself what can we do to protect ourselves because i'm in this as well we're all in it together what can we do to protect ourselves from words from other people things that other people say influencing us so unless you're Surround yourself with people that are positive all day long, 24 hours a day, 
always full of the joys of life, feeling wonderful and continuously telling you how wonderful the world is and how wonderful you are. It's very unlikely that you have a life like that where you're surrounded by people like that. And I would struggle with being around people that were like that all the time because it's not very realistic because I'd wonder, I'd wonder what was going on in, in their minds. So it's finding, an, again, a balance to noticing the words, to listening to the words that people say, instead of just having the words go and thinking of something else when they're talking, instead of thinking about what you're gonna say to them once they're finished talking, because usually what our reply, what we say when someone's been speaking to us isn't a follow-on from the last sentence, it's a follow-on from something that triggered you earlier on in their conversation. So they might have said a big paragraph but you might actually be replying to a sentence halfway through that paragraph. But that means you've missed a bunch of stuff that maybe has gone in to your brain, gone into your mind, and is influenced you. And it's normal to be influenced. We're all influenced. If we didn't get influenced, then we would never learn. It's how we learn, we get influenced. We're influenced by television. Did you know, for example, did you know the, I don't like calling it Brexit, but now that seems to be the accepted word, even though it's a made up word, it's not a real word. But uh, the referendum that England or Britain or whoever this area did to decide to leave Europe. The side that wanted to, that, that basically we had the two, the stay in the leave parties that were trying to influence and manipulate the population, uh, which is just a political thing, isn't it? So, both sides, as far as I'm aware, were lying or exaggerating, missing out truths, missing out details that would have affected perhaps the outcome of the election or the referendum. But again, that's just natural standard politics, I guess. In the leave, I'm pretty much sure that in the leave party, that organisation that were trying to influence the population to vote leave, right? They employed Paul McKenna to help with the marketing, with the promotion, with the influence. And if you don't know who Paul McKenna is, he is pretty much the world's among the, the world's most famous hypnotists in the world, you know. Um, maybe in America there's someone that's more famous, but I don't know anyone. He's, he's definitely, he's up there in, you know, in, in England, he's, a, he's a, the top. He's the most successful author of self-help books in this country ever, I think. So, He's very influential anyway, as a person. He's very famous, he's known for helping people, and he's, you know, not just for the stage hypnosis shows he did in the 90s, but he's, he's known for helping people. Um, there was a time when you could rarely open a newspaper without reading about, uh, like a famous star, maybe it was, uh, I don't know, a boxer, that got hypnosis with Paul McKenna so they could uh, to help them win, to win the fight or to, to get them motivated and confident or to helping a celebrity, an actress to stop smoking or um, helping Robbie Williams, for example, uh, who's a singer in, in, the, in England, to help him with, uh, I, think a, I think a 
think it might have been flying phobia or stage fright or something like that. So he's very famous, very well known and trusted. And there's nobody watching. I don't think now. So cool. I can say what I want now. See, no one's listening, so don't matter. Oh, wait a minute, people might listen to this on playback, so, okay, I better behave. So, for me, the whole thing is, is, um, he influenced people. But he's not the only one that influenced people, because the politicians did, the newspapers did, the TVs did, the radio programs, the talking shows, you know, where people phoned in and discussed it. It's all influence. So it's a case of, we can't guard ourselves from all influence. That's an impossibility. The only way you can't, cannot ever be influenced by anybody was if you sat in a room on your own. No television, no newspapers, no books, nothing and you just, that's it. You'd even, you'd even be influenced by sounds from outside. You know, if there was sounds of neighbors, you'd be influenced by that. That would have an emotional effect on you. If there was a neighbor talking, if you heard an ice cream van, you get an emotional reaction to that, thinking, oh, you're hungry, you're like an ice cream, you're hot. Or maybe you'd think about a memory of having an ice cream when you was younger, or maybe you think of the Eddie Murphy sketch, you know, where he talks about ice cream on his stand-up show, Delirious. So, and even then, if you manage to block out all the sounds, and all you've got is your mind, your mind will start thinking about stuff and influencing you, and maybe starting to pick away at certain beliefs that you might have. Maybe beliefs, maybe you think that, oh, I can sit here and not have any contact with human beings and I can do that easily. And then maybe your mind, <laughs> your mind starts playing with you and say, well, maybe you can't just sit here and not have any contact with humans. Maybe it's not something that you can do. Maybe you need humans. So that could, you know, it's an influential thing. So whatever we do, we're influenced. That's why advertising basically rules the world. You know, if it wasn't for advertising, you know, it's, it's all commercial. We have to, if people weren't being able to be influenced easily, then there'd be no adverts. You know, I find it funny that actually, and I didn't realize this, but in supermarkets, they put the kids breakfast cereal lower at a level of where the kids are walking, so the kids height, so the chocolate breakfast cereal, you know the stuff that's really unhealthy. Uh, well, I suppose if it's chocolate, it can't be that healthy, but maybe it's really healthy, so I shouldn't say it. But they put it at the level to influence the child. But it's a bit more obvious for that. The child wants it. The child then persuades the mother to have it. And children are the most persuasive creatures on the planet because they just won't shut up until they get what they want. They keep going on and on and on and on, causing a fuss, making a noise, and eventually the mother gives in, or the father, or the Smurf, or whatever else is taking the child shopping. The Labrador, I don't know. And so what can we do to, what can you do? to put yourself into a position to protect yourselves from people at work, people on television, people from influence you. And not in a, I'm not talking about this in a conspiracy theorist way. 
I'm just talking about it in the fact that we're human beings and we are influenced. So it might be worth keeping an eye on that to notice what's good for you, what may be noticing how you feel when you've watched something on television. If it's a documentary about serial killers, maybe do you feel good after watching that? Does that give you some kind of happy feeling? Personally, it doesn't for me, but maybe I'm just old fashioned. But it's not just about television. So when you're talking to somebody, there's a lot of language patterns that people use and it's I never even noticed it until I started learning hypnosis I'll give you an example and I had uh, there was a lady on my course when I was studying counseling back in 2007 to 2010 and she said, yeah, she had an argument with a tutor about this. But basically, it's when you talk to someone and say, you feel this. So, uh, for example, and you know, when you go to the shop, you feel you know, your, your legs feel this way after walking for so long. And then your legs are this. And different examples of this but it's like well wait a minute no my legs don't feel that way because it's like they're telling you how you feel even though they're talking about themselves and they're describing their own situation they don't own it they're telling you and maybe they want you to feel exactly how they feel or felt which isn't good when someone's telling you about a heart attack they had or a, a really serious, horrible situation, perhaps they need to own that. Maybe talk about it, but don't have to talk about saying, well, and then you feel this, and then you feel that, and you you couldn't do this. And I don't actually even say the whole sentence, actually, because um, I don't want to do it myself. I hope that makes sense. But it's, uh, I suppose, a positive uh, what spin on it would be, um, you know, you get that, I remember I, I went shopping and the good thing when I went, when I went to the shop, you know, you f I got there and you felt really good knowing that I got there in time. You, you felt really good knowing you got there just before the shop closed and you felt really good. See... I don't understand why people talk like that because it seems a weird way to talk. It seems the right, really good way to do it if you're doing hypnosis with somebody because then you're turning your experience and presenting it to them, telling them that you're feeling good inside, that you're feeling more relaxed, stuff like that. But if you're doing it in a a negative way maybe not even meaning to that could be harmful to somebody and some people are really really impressionable so we're all impressionable but some people are really 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 impressionable to the point where uh, some people can't say no some people just can't say no if they're asked to do something they feel they have to do it. Or if they're told that they should feel a certain way, then they feel obligated to feel that certain way. Which is probably good in some situations, probably good for the, their partner, or their work colleague, or their employer, or their father, or their daughter, or, you know, you know, if to be able to, if they can, if you can get your own way with someone all the time, knowing that they can never say no, you can take advantage of that person. 
It's not fair though. It's not fair on that person. It's really less than fair. It's pretty quite grim actually to be like that with someone. I would suggest. Andre? Andre's there. Andre! Come here, boy. Oh, well, by the way, I'm tapping my leg. That's what I'm doing. I'm tapping my leg. That's... So, that's what I've been thinking about. It's noticing the things that other people say. And it doesn't have to be the words even. It can be the point of views. It can be opinions. It can be repetition. Hearing something continuously over and over again over maybe long periods of time can have a huge effect without us even being aware of it. So it's about becoming more aware Noticing how other people are with you, what kind of things that they might say that affects you and affects your life and your well being. And then we move on to now what we say to ourselves, which is something that I will continuously come back to because. It's so important. Can you imagine somebody that's maybe constantly saying, I don't, I don't want to use the word negative because negative is such a, such a weird word because it is subjective and it's judgmental and it's a weird kind of strange word, but we could use the word shitty Someone says something shitty to you, just uh, just something grim and just dark and uh, prejudiced, or you know something that's like. Ugh. Can you imagine what that person is saying to themselves? I don't want you to imagine it, but can you just you know for a second, it's like if they're saying that outwards kind of stuff are they saying to themselves they really ain't having a good time it's, uh, I mean, it's an obvious statement but people that are happy inside are not unhappy outside you know <laughs> it's kind of obvious but How you are inside affects every aspect of your life. How you feel inside affects how you see the world, how you perceive the world, how you perceive your life, how you perceive yourself, how you perceive your friends. It affects your enjoyment of watching a film, listening to music, eating food, maybe even affects your enjoyment and the taste of that food depending upon how you feel inside. Of course, what happens outside can affect how you feel inside. Of course it does. Like how you feel inside affects your life outside because if you're in a really loving mood, there's more chance that you'll say something loving to someone that you care about. As opposed to, what's well, the whole thing though, isn't it really? Nobody, nobody that, nobody that feels all loved up inside would be hostile, pretty much to anyone when they're in that state, because it's. It's an impossible state to 
to be hostile in. So it's been a long time for me since I was like loved up. But I kind of remember it. I kind of remember. And in those moments, it's the world is brighter, the sky, I'm not going to say the sky is bluer because I know that's a cliche, but everything seems nicer. Jokes are funnier. Things that perhaps bothered me the day before or the week or month before just didn't bother me. Didn't care about the little stuff. Love is powerful. And I know that I'm talking about maybe emotional love there, but love itself. Can you imagine if we could just have a bit of that feeling directed towards you and allow that to grow every day? Not in a narcissistic way. I'm really pleased that I actually came up with the word narcissistic because that's one of those weird words that I usually leave my mind when I try to think of it. It's another one of those just... I don't see the point in those words. Just judge, judgmental words like always oh, being narcissistic. He's a, like such an old, old-fashioned thing, all those... Uh, words named after books, you know, characters in books. It's just because, you know, I just wonder if Freud, Freud rather, Freud, Freud had been around, and Jung, and all those people, if they'd have been around today, would they be naming their characters from the Harry Potter books? Or Game of Thrones. You see what I mean? It's like just it... anyway. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. I wanted to say thank you to those of you that have been watching these, listening on you know iTunes, SoundCloud, downloading. I've had a big increase in plays and downloads on iTunes and SoundCloud and all the different podcasts associated with that in the last week, more so than I've had for quite a while. So that's quite nice to know. I know on YouTube don't get a lot of activity because it's a new channel and I don't really do much to promote it. Uh, Vimeo again, I've, I get some activity on there. The website also gets some activity. But the videos that I put on Facebook, the live ones, seem to get more activity than the videos from YouTube. But the audios are the ones that get the most focus for some reason. So just thank you for those of you supporting me. I'm going to continue doing these. Believe it or not, I am going to continue doing these and they'll all be different, they'll all be similar in some ways possibly, but they'll all be different in other ways. Yeah. So I do wonder, what can you notice when other people are talking to you? What can you notice by the words that they are using? And of course, what are you saying to yourself? That's a hugely important thing. What you're saying to yourself is massively important to get in touch with that and to notice so that you can really maybe step back, make a decision. What is acceptable? So you could be your own security. So let's say you're a nightclub and you've got your 
a tall person, tall man, tall woman, whatever, the security on the front of the door, stopping people from getting in who aren't on your list. So you can choose what's on your list. You can choose kind thoughts, kind suggestions, things when someone's saying something that's nice that you like. Those things that go against what you uh, believe in and things that you don't want to hear, you can notice that because when you notice it, it won't go in. Because you're stopping it. If it fits in with how you feel, that's why getting in touch with how you feel, the kind of belief systems you have can be useful because then you only allow things in that fit along with that belief system. But at the same time, it's challenging that belief system because you might have an outdated belief system in some ways. I'm sure we all do in some ways about certain things, whether it's to do with your physical ability, your mental ability, your social ability, you know, it could be to do with your um, yeah, it could be just how how you look, it could, you know, how you feel about your appearance. Maybe that's not helpful. Uh, you might have written yourself off and say, well, don't expect ever to meet another man or woman ever again that wants to be um, romantically involved. If you had that in your head, unless you want that to be there, then maybe time to challenge those beliefs. And that's something we'll be talking about a lot. Oh yes, beliefs, self-limiting beliefs, things that we say to ourselves that are useful, things that are not useful, things that other people say to us that are useful and not useful, things that we say to other people. Because it has to work both ways. It can't just be um, us expecting other people to say nice things and to be kind to us. It works both ways. I would say, I would suggest. And that's what these buffet thingy magics are all about, is just noticing, thinking about certain things. And if you've got your eyes closed and maybe you feel you're drifting off, and I could quite easily, just checking the radio, yeah, it's hot, but it's not very warm in here. I could easily fall asleep. <laughs> <sighs> tired. I am tired. Challenge and belief systems. Whether it's a useful belief system or not, is something worth doing. And also updating our belief systems. Because we get new knowledge, new information constantly that can update what we already know. if we choose to allow it to go in. So, I'm going now. Have a good evening, good day, good weekend, whatever that's going on with you. And I will see you again tomorrow. Thank you for watching. This video and MP3 is available to watch, download on YouTube, Vimeo, Facebook of course, on Twitter, uh, Google Plus and you can download or stream the audio on iTunes and what's the other one SoundCloud plus quite a few others as well um, Blubbery, Blueberry or whatever something there's quite a few different podcasts that I'm on uh, just just Google my name Jason Newland and you'll find lots of stuff for me uh, websites jasonnewland.com that's it and you'll be able to I will put the download link with this video as well as soon as it's all processed so you can just instantly download the audio to your computer or wherever you're downloading it to so thank you very much 
have a wonderful day and evening and I will be back again tomorrow for number seven of this. And there will be a new one every single day of this year, culminating in a book. <laughs> the best bits, or the worst bits, depending on what, what I can get most of. I'll see you later. Bye, bye, bye.